have a word of prayer. Father, we want to thank you for your word that we are looking at this morning. We pray for knowledge. We pray for wisdom. We pray for insight. We pray, O God, for a revelation of the truth, O God. And so that, Lord, we pray that your word will come with its transforming power. You will give life to these words. It will mingle with faith in us. It will transform us. And it will make out of us, O God, the kind of people you want us to be. Especially this month, where we've been talking about Christian mentoring. And so, God, make us good mentors and mentees. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Today's topic is interesting. And it's a question. It says, can you see it? Can you see it? It's a question. See what? We're going to find out. And our text is going to be from 1 Samuel chapter 1. 3 to 11. First Samuel chapter 1, 3 to 11. Do you know God loves us so much in house of God? It's amazing. God loves us. Amazing, incredible. God loves us. First Samuel chapter 1, 3 to 11. And I'm going to read it in the King James Version. And the Lord and this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of host in Shiloh and the two sons of Eli Hophni and Phinehas the priest of the Lord were there and when the time was that Elkanah offered he gave to Peninnah his wife and to all his sons to all her sons and her daughters portions but unto Anna he gave a worthy portion for he loved Hannah but the Lord had shut up her womb and her adversaries also provoked her sore, for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. Verse 7. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Then Elkanah, then said Elkanah, her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by the post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept so. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look unto the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but wilt give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Wow, what a story. I'm sure many of us have read this story over and over again. So I'll just pull out a few things from this text before I carry on. The first thing we are told is that Hannah wasn't the only wife to Elkanah. There were two of them. There was Hannah and there was also Penina. You know, the Bible tells us that Penina had sons and she had daughters. So even though we don't know how many she had, we know she had at least four children because she had at least two sons and at least two daughters. Whilst Hannah had none, no children. That was the story. And the Bible tells us that yearly they will go to Shiloh, where the house of God was, to worship and to sacrifice. Elkanah will give portions, you know, to Penina, to her daughters and to her sons. And then the Bible said he will give a worthy portion to Hannah. You know, I looked up what worthy portion was. He said a double portion. And that was because he loved Hannah so much. But the story gets, you know, has another twist to it. Because Penina knew Hannah had no children. You know, she would taunt her. She would bully her. 
She will torment her. In fact, the Bible says she will provoke her. And she did that every time they went to Shiloh because Hannah had no children there to do the sacrifice with her. Even though her husband gave her a worthy portion, she had no children. So that was an occasion for Penina to taunt her, to torment her, to provoke her. You know, and the fact that they were in the house of God did not stop Penina from doing it. Can you just imagine? So if she was doing it in Shiloh, in the house of God, that meant she was also doing it at home. Can you just imagine? And the Bible said that things got so bad. Anna wept bitterly. In fact, there was a time she went on hunger strike. The Bible didn't say she was fasting. It just said she just decided not to eat. That was how bad things became. And obviously, Elkanah, being a good and loving husband, was very concerned. He called her and said to her, Look, am I not better to you than ten sons? And Anna, obviously, <laughs> sorry, sweetie. Yes, you may love me, but you are not better than ten sons. I'm sorry, because, you know, you cannot take the place of a son. You know, so Hannah was, was desperate, was desperate for a child, desperate for something. And then, if you like, suddenly the penny dropped. Hannah decided to do something she had never done before. Remember, the message is, can you see it? We are told that um, the sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were also present in the house of God at Shiloh. But it was public knowledge to everybody that they were sons of Balea. I looked up the meaning of the word sons of Belial. It means they were worthless men. And you can read that in 1 Samuel 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12, verse 17 and 22. 1 Samuel 2. We're going to read verse 12, 17 and 22. Verse 12 says, Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. Why? For they knew not the Lord. Can you imagine? Their father was the priest, but they didn't know the Lord. They were in the house of God, but they didn't know the Lord. I mean, how incredible can that be? Father being a priest, and they were living in the house of God and still did not know the Lord. Let's jump to verse 17. Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. For the men abhorred the offering of the Lord. When people brought offerings, sacrifice to the Lord, they took for themselves the best of it. Let's jump to verse 22. Now, Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto Israel, how they lay with their women, at the, at the, the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. They were sleeping with their women. They were messing about with their women. These are meant to be sons of priests. Hannah saw a future where there was the risk of Israel having no priest because Eli's children were clearly not in a position to receive the priesthood baton from him. Remember, we were talking about passing it on. Eli's legacy was at risk. Hannah could see that. Eli couldn't possibly have any more children. Hannah could see that. His children were a thorn in his flesh and there was clearly nothing he could do about it or maybe he wasn't even willing to do any more about it. Hannah could see that. But I, Hannah also saw something. Hannah saw that, wait a minute. If I had a son, I can give the son to the Lord. And that will solve the problem. I can give this son to the Lord and this son can become a priest in the house of the Lord. Hannah was perhaps thinking, the solution to my problem will also be the solution to God's problem. Hannah saw it. And I'm asking us, can you see it? Because if you can't see it, it will be a challenge and we'll move further. God needs a priest, Hannah said. I need a son. So she vowed and said, Lord, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you. I will hand him over to Eli to train and to mentor him. If you give me a priest, if you give me a son, I will hand him back to you. That will solve my problem. 
And that will solve your, your problem too. Hallelujah. Hannah was a woman of prayer. We're talking about mentoring the next generation. It's going to be birthed in the place of prayer. Hannah had a vision. Seeing her son. Can you imagine? This son was not yet born. So it clearly had to be a vision. That she was seeing that. Look, wait a minute. God, you give me a son. I will give him back to you. He will be a priest. Israel will not be without a priest. The problem will be solved. We won't have to worry about Hophni and Phinehas who were messing about. We won't have to worry about them. Hannah had a vision. Hannah had a vision. And that vision was birthed in the place of prayers. Can I invite you and I to be very prayerful? That is where the vision about the next generation, about what we can do, what needs to be done, that's where it's going to be birthed. It's going to be birth in the place of prayer. You know, can I invite us to go back on our knees and cry to God and say, God, I want to see it. Hannah saw it. What do you see? Hannah saw it. And she was praying to God. I believe God was giving her a revelation of the future. And that's what informed her decision to make this vow to God. She was a woman who had a vision of the future. Now, can you imagine what would have happened if Hannah didn't give Samuel to the Lord? If she didn't make this decision to do so, what would have happened to Eli's legacy? What would have happened to, 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 to the priesthood in Israel? What would have happened? Oh, I know you say God will raise up somebody else. But wouldn't it be amazing that you and I can be a part of what God is doing? Can you see it? Parents on the platform, what do you see in your children? Where do you see them? Are you back on your knees praying for God to bring that into manifestation? Because the vision that Hannah has was birthed in the place of prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. What you see drives you. If you see nothing, you will not be driven. Samuel was a product of his mother's vision. Samuel was a product of his mother's vision. What do you see? Mentors on the platform, what do you see? What do you see? Because if you don't see it, you will not be driven. Where do you see those children God has put in your, in your care? Where do you see them? If you don't see it, you will not be driven to your knees. You will not be driven to the place of prayer. You will not be driven to the point where you even desperate and say, God, this child must succeed. This child must make it. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'll read another text for us. Proverbs 29, 17 to 19. Proverbs 29, 17 to 19. And it says, correct thy son. And he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And a servant will not be corrected by words. For though he understand, he will not answer. Where there is no clear prophetic vision, the Bible says here, the people will wander astray. The text starts with correct your son. Correct that child. Why are you correcting the child? It is because you see a glimpse of the future. That if I leave this child to continue the way they are continuing, the future would be at risk. So mentors, you see something wrong in that mentee you are mentoring. Correct it because you can. You have a, vis a vision of the future. That if I don't train this child, if I don't correct this child, the future will be risky. That's why you don't pamper them. The Bible said, spare the rod and you will spoil the child. 
Hannah had a glimpse of the future. She saw a priest in this child she was requesting for. What do you see in those children? Are you sparing the rod? Are you just letting them go wild? Or are you training them because you can see a a vision of the future? The future that you want them to get into. A glorious, a prosperous future. A future that will bring glory and honor to the Lord. Is that what you see? Because that will inform your judgment, your decision on that child. How you train them, correct them, nurture them. And not over pamper them. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's why without no clear glimpse of the futures of the future, that child will go astray. And then Hannah made two profound statements. The first one is in the text that we can see on screen already. First Samuel 1 11. First Samuel 1 11. And I'll read it. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Let's jump to verse 25 to 28. Of first Samuel 1 25 to 28. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. This is after God had done it. God had blessed her with a child. And she said, Oh my Lord, as thou livest, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed. And the Lord hath given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore also I have learnt him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be learnt to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. Wow. Hannah made two profound statements. One, before the child was born. The second, after the child was born. Now, I have a question How did she know that Samuel would agree to her vow? She said, Lord, when you give me this man child, he is going to be a Nazarene. He will abstain from wine. He will abstain from anything sinful. He will not cut his hair. No razor will come. That's the rule of the, that's the law for the Nazarene. They don't, you know, just like Samson had. They won't cut the hair. They won't touch any wine. They won't touch any dead thing. That was the law. Hannah made this law even before the boy was born. How did she know that Samuel was going to agree to it? How did she know that Samuel was going to agree to dwell in the house of the Lord? What if Samuel says, Mom, that's your promise to God. That's not my promise. I don't want to be no Nazarene. And I don't want to live in God's house for the rest of my life. How did Hannah know that Samuel was going to agree to it? How did she know that he was going to agree to dwell in God's house for the rest of his life? Do you know how I know she knew? Because Samuel was birthed. That vision was birthed in the place of prayer. Parents, if you do the homework on your knees, you can determine the future of your children. They will not depart from serving God. They will not depart from pleasing God. Why? Because you birthed the whole thing on your knees. So if you're a parent on this platform and you're not praying for your children and you're just leaving them and you don't have a, 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 a picture of the future, they will just do anything. But Hannah knew this child somewhere was going to do it because he was birthed in the place of prayer. This vision was birthed. In the place of prayer. This child is a product of my vision. Birth in the place of prayer. And I'm appealing to us. Please don't neglect to pray. For your children. Pray for them. Pray with them. Let them see that prayer is important to you. Do it with them. A lot of parents pray for their children. But not with them. 
Are your children praying? Are they embracing prayer? Have you taught them? Praise the name of the Lord. Remember we are saying, can you see it? How did Hannah know that her husband would even agree with this crazy idea? How? I mean, Elkanah could have said, my goodness, this is, this is the only son you have. I'm not agreeing to him staying in the house of the Lord. But because the whole thing was birth in the place of prayer, Elkanah had no choice. He agreed. Amazing. Man, woman on this platform, you can do a lot in the place of prayer. You can do a lot. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And this reminds me of another story in the Bible. The story of Elisha. When Elijah was going, Elijah said, what do you want? He said, I just want a double portion of your spirit. Second Kings 2, 9 to 13. Can you see it? I hope you can see it. 2 Kings 2, 9 to 13. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they went on and talked, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind wind into heaven and Elisha saw it. And cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them into two. And then he took up the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. What did Elijah see? He saw the mantle. Mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles, whatever your, your role is on this platform, I hope you can see it. You can see what Hannah saw. Elisha saw the man too falling. And I dare say, Hannah also had her eyes on the man too. On the man too that was coming from Eli. She had her eyes on it. And she said, this thing must not go to waste. This man must not take this thing with him. Eli was old. There was nobody to pass it on to. She saw it. Elisha saw it. Can you see it? Because if you can't see it, every day you will be wasting it. Go back on your knees. Begin to declare into that future. Of that mentee God has given unto you. Don't leave it to chance. No. Command the future. On your knees. It's not time to complain or moan about the child. Command it on your knees. And you will see it. Hannah saw it. And she took hold of it. Elisha did not take his eyes off. Elijah. Until he saw that mantle. The sons of the prophet were making fun of him, jesting. Your own is too much. Serving, serving, praying. Your own is too much. Brother, sister, don't stop praying. Because that's how you're going to see it. Praise the name of the Lord. What else did Hannah do? 1 Samuel 1, 22. 1 Samuel 1, 22. But Hannah went not up, for she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child shall be on the child until the child be weaned. Then will I bring him that he may appear before the Lord and there abide forever. How old was Samuel when he was weaned? He stayed with his mother till he was weaned. You know, I was reading up 
Some people said he was between two and four. Some people said maybe he was age 11. Even though we are not told how old Samuel was, we know for a fact that he was old enough to look after himself. I don't think he would be in Diapas, in Pampas, when Hannah took him to Eli. Definitely that would have been ridiculous. He would have been old enough to feed himself, to you know, maybe bath himself. It definitely wasn't going to be a liability to Eli. So guess what? In all that period, what was Hannah doing? Teaching him. That was why I liked the song we sang this morning, the, the choir ministration. I know who I am. What was she doing? She was busy teaching uh, Samuel. This is who you are. You're a child of God. You're a child of promise. When I was, when I was uh, trusting God for you, this is the promise I made to the Lord. This is the reason why I made it. She was busy training him. That's why there's no record anywhere that Samuel refused to go. Because Samuel could have refused to go. But this woman, Hannah, trained him, taught him, prayed for him. Taught him the significance of serving God. He didn't know God personally. Yes, we hear that later. But she taught him enough for him not to say, no, mommy. You know, you've made that vow to God. I am going to go. Parents, are you teaching your children? Mentor, are you teaching the mentee? Those good values. She taught him about who he was. And that reminds me of the story of Jochebed and Moses. Jochebed is Moses' mother. We'll read another text. Exodus 2, 9 to 11. Exodus 2, 9 to 11. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, Because I drew him out of the water. And it came to pass in those days, when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren, and looked on their burdens, and he spied an Egyptian smiting an Hebrew, one of his own brethren. How did Moses know? That he wasn't an Egyptian. Even though he was raised in the palace. By Pharaoh's daughter. How did he know? It was his mother. His mother taught him. Look son. I am raising you. I am your real mother. We are Hebrews. We serve God. We love God. We pray to God. But because of the circumstances of your birth. You have to go to the Pharaoh's daughter. She will claim you as, as her child. She will be your mother. But please remember who you are. She taught him. The Bible said when he was old, he, he knew that he was not an Egyptian. He knew it. How? Because Jockey Bear taught him. Are you teaching your children? Do they know who they are? Because they are living, because they are living in Egypt, are they thinking that they are Egyptians? Or do they still remember that they are Hebrew children? The Bible says we are, of the, we are living in the world, but we are not of the world. Do your children know who they are? Thank God for Jokey Bed. And Hannah did something. I was even also very interesting. Another text I want us to read. 1 Samuel 2, 18 to 21. 1 Samuel 2, 18 to 21. She did something else. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child, guarded with a linen effort. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up, to, came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give this seed of this woman for the loan which she lent unto the Lord. And they went unto their own home. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And, and the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Hannah never ceased to be in contact with Samuel. She remained in contact with him. I want to appeal to us mentors on the house. The mentee is never too old for you to remain in close proximity to them. To nurture them, to speak into their lives. 
Don't say, oh, they are an adult now. Oh, they are now over 18. You know, they have their own life to live. No. Hannah remained in close proximity. I'm sure when she went there from year to year, nurturing him, she would pour more into him. Remember, listen to what Eli is telling you. Follow his instructions. I can just imagine her saying that to child Samuel. And we saw the evidence of it in his life. Don't stop. Don't stop with your children. Carry on, mentor. Carry on. Keep doing it. There is no retirement age in mentoring. There is no retirement age. Don't say, oh, well, the adults now leave them. No, she kept doing it. And guess what? It was in the midst of going back and forth yearly, doing that, that God thought, my goodness, look at this woman. God remembered her father and gave her five more children. Five more. Five more children. My God. Because God saw that, my goodness, she raised one so beautifully. I can entrust her with five more. Brethren, God wants to bring in your sphere many people that you can influence. But he's watching to see how you're, what you are doing with the ones you currently have. Are you a good influence on them? The ones you have now. He will bless you with more. I don't mean biological children. But there will be many people God will bring your sphere that you can be a blessing to. If he knows you are faithful with the one. Hallelujah. And let's see. 1 Samuel 3, 1 to 7. 1 Samuel 3, 1 to 7. I hope somebody is being blessed by this. And I hope you are making certain decisions as you are listening to me. 1 Samuel 3, 1 to 7. I tell you, God is amazing. This is the text that we read in Sunday school this morning. And I'm like, wow, awesome Jesus. This is incredible. So when I, when I saw that text, I'm like, God, thank you. This is a confirmation that this is a word in season. And as someone on this platform, including myself, needs to hear this word. 1 Samuel 3, 1 to 7. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the Lamb of God, and ere the Lamb of God went out of the temple, in other words, before the Lamb of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, that the Lord called Samuel and said, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here am I. For thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not. My son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. Brethren, isn't that a wonderful dividend? Excellent return on Hannah's investment. Samuel was now in a place where God was speaking to him directly. That's what you want, mentors. And your children will be so groomed in the Lord, trained in the Lord, that God will begin to speak to them directly. God wasn't sending Eli to Samuel. He was calling Samuel directly to an extent that Eli said to him, look, if he calls again, it's the Lord that's calling you. Say, Lord, here am I, send me or speak on. Hallelujah. The Bible says Samuel ministered to the Lord. I want to appeal to us until you get to a point where your children are serving the Lord. Parents, your job is not done. Your assignment is not over. The Bible said Samuel ministered to the Lord. He ministered to Eli. He kept the, alt the fire on the altar burning. He was committed to the work. Parents, until you get to that point, your assignment is not done. And the same thing was true of Elisha. He was committed, he was consistent, and he remained close to Elijah until he received the mantle falling. God has given us a responsibility 
for birthing the next generation. Can you see it? Samuel ended up being one of the greatest prophets that ever lived. Why? Because his mother saw it. Please bow your heads and let us pray. And you're going to pray for yourself, particularly those of us who are parents. And even if you're not, you're going to ask, Lord, help me to see it. Give me a glimpse of the future, this glorious future of my children. Help me to see it. Help me to birth their glorious future, even on my knees. Help me to go back on my knees. Help me to speak in their life. Give me the wisdom to train them. Help me not to stop. Hannah never stopped. She was a woman driven by what she had seen. She never stopped. She never stopped. She kept going back to Shiloh, training this boy, training him until the point where he was able to minister to Eli, minister to the Lord, hear God for himself, know the Lord for himself. Father, please help us as parents to pour into the lives of our children. Help us, Lord, to not quit, oh God. Help us, Lord, to keep, to keep at it. Help us to go back on our knees. Ask God, say, Lord, help me, Lord, to go back on my knees. Father, mother, God is waiting for you to birth the future of these children. He is waiting for you to birth it in the place of prayer. He is waiting for you to catch a glimpse of the future. No one else can do it as good as you are because you are their parents. Say, God, open my eyes to see it. To see this thing that I need to see in their future that will drive me to my knees. Help me, Lord, that my children will turn out right. I'm sure Hannah must have been so proud of Samuel. The Bible said that when Samuel was coming to the city, the people trembled because they, why, why are you coming? What has the Lord said? He was so revered. My goodness. And it was all started. It all started with his mother seeing it. Lord, please help us to see it. And help us not to quit. Lift up your two hands and I'll pray. Father Lord, I thank you for this word today. I know this is a word that you, O oh God, have ordained. Can we see it? Please open our eyes. Give us a clear vision of the future. Help us to run with the vision. You said your people perish for lack of a vision. We don't want to perish and we don't want the next generation to perish. And so please give us a vision. Help us to be like Hannah who never gave up, who kept her teeth, who kept training, teaching, pouring, investing. Please help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. I commit even the next generation into your hands that they will turn out right. That our investment over them will not be in vain. Our prayer over them will not be in vain. Our time spent with them will not be in vain. That they will receive, oh God, your word, your truth, your teachings. And they will turn out well. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.